When it comes to self-help, you want to get right to the point. The Workbook from author Alicia Puzzany. Emotional Strength Explained can help you see results quickly. Instead of overthinking or operating from a naive, unsure, or people-pleasing state where you look for immediate gratification, with the help of this workbook, you can become stronger emotionally. Whether you're embarking on something new or working through things with yourself or others, understanding what makes you, you, is the crucial first step in coming out on top. Your emotions don't have to control your life. You can learn a better way. With this workbook, you'll work toward a stronger, more confident, less needy you. It's for adolescents, teenagers, adults, and seniors. This is an easy-to-use workbook. With just a few minutes each day, you can become stronger and feel better. You can use this workbook over and over through various areas and stages of your life. Life isn't easy. When times get tough, we need to dig deep and utilize our emotional strength. Emotional Strength Explained from author Alicia Puzzany. Available in Kindle and paperback on Amazon and the author's website, aliciapuzzany.com. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And make sure that you follow and subscribe on whatever platform you are listening to us on. Okay. So this, um, I, I, I guess, do we, we a war, eve of war, I, I don't know, in Ukraine, what's going on? So Biden came out today and uh, with his bold action and announced the first wave of sanctions against Russia. And what, you know what Russia did yesterday is they took two regions of Ukraine and recognized them as independent countries. <laughs> Bless you, Kathy. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Bi- one Biden up. makes us all sneeze. <laughs> oh, yes. I always okay, sneeze in groups. B- bless you again. So weird. Me and the I, dog. I, I normally would just say bless you the first time, but since everybody's listening, I got to say it every time. Usually you know? Brian waits till I'm done because he knows I yes. sneeze like in three or four or five. But you guys seven. will just think I'm rude if I don't do it on the first yes, one. So well, we I got to do it on rude. the first one just so – just for appearance. <laughs> so so Biden came out with these, these sanctions and um, – this is this is what I'll I'll ask you guys, and it's it's a simple question between the sneezes. Oh um, my goodness! When have sanctions done anything? You know, we've had sanctions on Cuba for sixty years. We've had sanctions on North Korea for sixty years, mm-hmm. and when you're dealing with dictatorial regimes, they like sanctions because what sanctions do. And I know liberals listening will say, that's crazy. He hit the banks and he cares about his money. Let me tell you this, okay? Putin, who's a multi-billionaire, many, many, many times over, many times over. Wherever his money is at, there's no sanctions on that, okay? <laughs> okay. I think these sanctions you know, a lot are um, – well, I know they have sanctions on Cuba and – Which and have done nothing. North Korea, yeah. And, and, and Iran. But I never hear specifically – like you said, the banks or something like well, that. Well, he mentioned I, the banks by name today. I never hear specifically, specifically what they're doing. They do not. Well, the reason that. I think it's a feel good. Yeah. To, it's make, to make people think they're doing something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, Biden. We know you, you're with it. You're okay. Tough. You're with it. You're, you're, you're no cognitive decline there. You got the sanctions. <laughs> but, you know, the, exactly. the thing that. Okay. No, I'm serious about the sanctions. These countries like the sanctions because what the sanctions do are make them victims and yeah. and oppressed by their enemy, which is the United States. So they they like the sanctions. Now, if Biden came out today and said, we're, we're taking a strong position on what Putin, he, he said one thing, he was trying to act all tough, right, all butch. He says, he says, who in God's name does Putin think he is carving out two new countries out of a country sovereign territory? Okay, I get it. I'm not going to disagree or that. I mean, I, or agree, I, you know, you know, um, But if he said this, if he came out and said this, who in God's name does Putin think he is carving two countries out of Ukraine's sovereign territory? I have spoken to our NATO allies. We are going to bring the strictest sanctions ever brought on a country. Every bank in the world that has Putin money in it, those accounts are now frozen. And Putin will not have access to his personal account. And by the way, that includes his daughter in London or Paris, wherever she's always jet setting around. And, yeah. and, and, the, and our NATO allies, the Brits, uh, right now as we speak, are seizing 
uh, Putin's daughter's apartment in London or wherever her part. I know she's got a place in London. She's I always. I didn't even know at- he had a daughter. Oh yeah, she jet sets around the world. She's like uh, an heiress, you know. They're richer than Trump, Putin. But he didn't do that. He he mentioned some things I never heard of, and yeah. then the Nord Two is Nord is like a VPN, but they got a pipeline named Nord Two. Okay, you know, and uh, okay, you know, Biden loves stopping pipelines. It's a big nothing what he announced today, and um, it's just total weakness. And th- there's there's no way that you're going to get uh, the the American people behind Biden on this. And th- there's a couple of reasons why. One. And those of you that are living outside the United States may not get this, but in the United States, Americans don't care about most other places in the world unless it has a direct impact on us. And Ukraine is a place that most Americans, including our vice president, would not be able to find on a map that was unlabeled. It's a big country. It is big. I looked on a map. Now I know where it is. It's between Russia and Poland, and it is a really large piece of land. Area-wise. It's it's like farmland. It's really huge. What yeah. is? What are the resources there that I know they're saying he wants it to be back part of Mother Russia? But aren't there? Isn't there? Oil they have na- or- they have natural gas, and they got. Yeah. Um, it's 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 all about. And money. there's a, a a big seaport that they that, that okay. they say he would want for his navy. I I, I don't yeah. know, but I but I know this: Americans don't care, and you know this country, the United States, has so many problems going on right now. Kathy was just doing. This was crazy. Kathy was just doing our grocery shopping on, uh, what, do you, what do you use, DoorDash? No, 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 Instacart. Instacart. DoorDash is to order food okay. from like a restaurant. Okay, yeah, we use Instacart, okay, to order our groceries. Mm-hmm. And actually, Instacart is really awesome, and, and sometimes people think, oh, you're so fancy, you know. It saves us. It's like 10 bucks a month. I, I do Instacart and Walmart. I split because there's a lot of things like, Coke and chips and things like that. I can get at Walmart for like three dollars cheaper. Yeah, it adds. So, you know, it adds up. Uh, we do it not as a luxury; it, it's convenient, but it saves us tons of money because you don't do any impulse buying. You only buy what's on the list, and you know how it is when you go to the grocery it's store. True. You're always so it, it costs us ten dollars a month, but it probably saves us. I don't know. It could save us a hundred, two hundred dollars oh, a month. Probably two, two or three hundred easily because there's no impulse buying, right. no nothing. And you can go through your list before you order, and remove. You can go through your gro- your groceries at home and say, "Oh, I already have like I had had um, something on there," and then I looked in the pantry. Oh, I have that already, like ketchup or something. And when you're at the grocery store, if you if, if you might see something, be like, "Do I have that yeah. at home, or don't I? I don't remember." And then you buy it; it's like five dollars. Yeah. So you know, I um I don't really pay attention to the prices at the grocery store because we don't go in person anymore. Kathy does everything on Instacart, yeah. so I haven't really seen the prices yeah. uh, at the grocery store since before COVID. And one thing that I like is I like I like lunch meat in particular. I like roast beef. Yeah, and. Th- th- now, the big grocery chain here in Florida is Publix. And you know how it is at your grocery store. When you get lunch meat, you have the store brand, and then you have, like, Boar's Head. Right. There's and Publix brand and Boar's the Head. The Publix brand. brand, which is a generic store brand for roast beef, is $14 a pound. Yeah. And um, – I like Boar's Head, but, yeah. I, but something in Boar's Head make – like, I have an allergic reaction, so yeah. – I don't eat it anymore. Yeah. So but this it is now. I, I ordered a pound of the Publix roast beef, and it was fourteen bucks. 40, that's, I couldn't believe it, it. That's not Boar's Head. That's the generic store brand. Is fourteen dollars a pound? It used to be so, like seven dollars. So let me tell you something. That's we're going to stretch that out. I mean, that's like Kobe beef prices here. So so, and I, I, the reason I bring this up, Kobe beef, it's when, probably more money actually. Yeah, bacon's like Kobe beef too. You know what? The reason I bring this up about our grocery shopping. That's what people in this country care about. People in this country don't care about Ukraine and Russia and what's going on when uh, roast beef is $14 a pound for the generic store brand. And, you know, and I I don't even want to – I can only imagine what the boar's head is. Yeah, it's probably who knows seventeen at least dollars. And at least, yeah, everything is definitely, especitely meats. And then Biden Definitely says, "Definitely a lot more money." Yeah, and then Biden says, "Who, who, in God's name, does does Putin think he is taking two areas of a nation, a sovereign nation's land, and, and saying it's two other countries and recognizing these two other countries?" Well, who the hell does Biden think he is 
opening up our border without any security. Exactly. And and you know the the South Americans, Latin Americans, Central Americans have decided that the United States is their country and they're coming over here. They're not assimilating. They're getting on the on on uh, government assistance and uh you know, and it, it, what, well, what they're Biden- straining the system, and and it's funny because I'm reading this book about the Gilded Age, and it's a lot about the immigration of the later 19th century, and um, Ellis Island and the this place, Garden Center, or somewhere in New York before Ellis Island that brought in the immigrants, and the same issues that people have today with immigrants they had back then. They were concerned about bringing in diseases. Of course, this was pre-antibiotic time, but they were concerned about um, straining the system of, of, of the economy, taking jobs, um, l- bringing in lower wage labor and things like that. And they were being inundated with so many immigrants, but they were concerned with these same things too, with them coming in without a, some kind of check or without some kind of system and straining the American economy. Well, and, they're, and not only are they doing that, not only are they doing that, okay, they're taking over our country, if you think about it, because what what's happening with this mass wave of Latin Americans, they're coming over here in large numbers um, illegally. And then what do the what do the Democrats do? They count them in the census and all of a sudden they've got they're, they're affecting the congressional districts. Well, that's why they're doing so. Them. So so Latin America is doing to our so- sovereign border in a different way what Putin's doing in Ukraine. Yes. And when you've got an open— And they move them into strategic locations. They relocate yeah, them— for purposes that are very, not good. Right. They're, it's political. They relocate them. And they talked about this in that book, too. Back then, what they would do, and it was the Democratic Party did the same Always. thing. Always. Yeah, they're creeps. And this was back in 1890— and they would they would bring in the immigrants and they would go up to them and they would give them money, food, yeah. housing, and then they would say, You have to vote for us now. Yeah. And it was an it yeah. was a That's what they do. pro quo. That's what they do. And and you know, the Democrats the Democrats they're ignoring our sovereignty in this country. So how can Americans, yeah. when the Democrats are wiping away the sovereignty of the United States at the southern border wide open? Be concerned about the sovereignty of a country, Ukraine, that no one can find on an unlabeled map. And you know what? Even if you gave most people – and I'm not saying this is a snob thing. I'd have to look. It'd take me a second. If you give people in this country a labeled map, it would take a bit to find uh, you, Ukraine on it. Now, I want to take a moment to tell people about the Thomas Edison of sleep, Mike Lindell, the inventor of the My Pillow, And, you, you know, you guys, this, this is um, – what 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 Mike Lindell is dealing with, what Mike Lindell is dealing with is insane. Okay, it's really insane. And what he's what he what he's dealing with is cancel culture, like you wouldn't believe. And Mike Lindell and My Pillow kicked out of all the American retail stores, kicked off of the uh, Home Shopping Network, c- kicked off of QVC in Canada. He's been kicked out of the retail stores up there, and kicked out of the um, television home shopping channels. In mm-hmm. Canada, yeah. and the only thing that has kept Mike Lindell and My Pillow in business through this cancel culture that he's uh, experiencing due to his support of President Trump are you guys out there, MAGA, buying these products. And when you buy something from MyPillow.com and you use our promo code Kane at checkout, K A N E, not only are you supporting Mike Lindell and his continued support of MAGA and President Trump, you're supporting our program too when you use our promo code Kane at checkout. Every special you see at MyPillow.com, you can take advantage of with our promo code Kane, K-A-N-E, no matter what it says. But let me tell you about a couple of my favorites. Uh, the MyPillow, normally $69.98. With our promo code Kane, the lowest price ever, $19.98. $19.98 for the MyPillow. The MyPillow 100% Giza Cotton Dream Sheets. With our promo code Kane, K-A-N-E, 60% off, as low as $39.99. The MyPillow Pet Beds, we have two of these. 50% off with the promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. The MyPillow bathrobes, Kathy and I each have this. They come in multiple colors, and they also have a new style. We have the heavier one. They have a lighter uh, robe now for MyPillow, 30% off with our promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. The MyPillow My Slippers, 50% off with the promo code Kane, K-A-N-E. Um, and many other specials, too. If you click on the photograph of Mike Lindell, Holding the American flag, there's some great deals there, including 
uh, over 70% off the six-piece MyPillow towel set, regularly $109.99, just $29.99 with the promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. The MyPillow 3-inch mattress topper, Kathy and I have this as well. Uh, The 3-inch mattress topper, the thickest mattress topper that Mike Lindell makes, which comes with a 10-year warranty, helps regulate body temperature, gives you comfort, gives you support. Kathy's back pain went away after just one night sleeping on this. 50% 50% off the MyPillow mattress topper with our promo code Kane at checkout. Now, again, every special at MyPillow.com you can take advantage of with the promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. All right, now, um, I want to play this for you. And Now, this is involving Ukraine, okay? And um, this is from MSNBC last night. Okay, now... When you turn on the television, there's a big push to war, big push to war. And uh, they have all these experts from, you know, uh, retired military people, retired diplomats and all this stuff. And what they don't disclose to you is what these retired people are doing now. They may be retired from the military. They may be retired from the State Department. They may be a retired ambassador. But believe me, they have other jobs on the side. And. They uh, quite often have agendas that you have no idea about. And, and I picked this up from MSNBC last night and because this is something that everyone knows. So last night on MSNBC, to give analysis on Ukraine, they brought on Rachel Maddow's show, mm. Vinman, Colonel Vinman. Now, Colonel Vinman, oh my yeah, Colonel Vinman is that, uh, that piece of work that – Got President Trump impeached over the Ukrainian phone call. And let me play for you what he said, and then let's Mm. talk about him for a minute. This is Colonel Vindman. Last night, Rachel Maddow's show. Rachel's not there. Uh, They had a fill-in guy. Uh, Here it is. I I think these folks, uh, these right-wing pundits and the the GOP that supports him really, frankly, have blood on their hands because they're encouraging and enticing this kind of – opportunism from uh, from Putin. And it's not with it's not just kind of uh, plain rhetoric and uh, like you could say something without consequences, like too often happens in the in the United States. This is has real consequences and people are going to die because of this. What happened? OK, so he's saying that those of us he was particularly talking about Fox News, but those of us that oppose intervening in Ukraine against Russia have blood on our hands. And he goes and th- that was just a clip out of a f- whole full segment. And there was one – There were the, uh, So wait, hold on. Mm-hmm. Just having an opinion – That differs from Vinman. That – just having an opinion that you don't think we – that you that you don't think the government, U.S. government should go in and get involved. Just having mm-hmm. that opinion gives you blood on your hands. That's right. Yes. That's nuts. Yeah. They're, they're really villainizing blood, yeah. – Not figuratively either. the thought police. They're villainizing mm-hmm. opinions. They're villainizing thoughts. Yeah. And uh, that's just crazy. I yeah. mean, so were all the people that were against Vietnam, were they, did they have blood on their hands I guess too? so. I mean, I guess all those so. protesters and all those yeah. hippies. I have to ask Vindman when we have know, him on the show they, here. They called the soldiers baby killers. Did they have blood on their hands I guess too? so. Now, Vindman, now what they left out with Colonel Vindman was uh, two things about him, maybe more, but they, they left out some things about him. So Vindman's on Rachel Maddow's show with a guest host last night telling us why we need to stop Russia from going into Ukraine, and if you disagree with that, it's just as if you're a killer. Blood on your hands. This is what they didn't tell us, okay? Um, Vinman, Colonel Vinman is not a natural-born U.S. citizen. He is an immigrant. He was born in another country, and uh, his parents brought him here when he was a baby, but he was born – I know a lot of you know this – he was born – where do you guys think? Yeah, he was born in the Ukraine – when it was the USSR, when it was part of the Soviet Union. Yeah. And uh, not so only- he has his own agenda. Well, yeah, and I'm not really sure what his agenda is because his parents were raised under the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. So I don't know if he's got a Russian agenda or a Ukrainian agenda, but I know this. They didn't tell you that during this segment. And he's got a nice, you know, he's an American and he has an American accent. He came here as a baby. But I think it's relevant to tell your viewers, this guy who says that if we don't think America should go to war to defend Ukraine, you have blood on your hands, that he's Ukrainian himself. And another thing that they didn't tell you, when he was in the army, the Ukraine, he was a lieutenant colonel in the army, right? The Ukraine offered Colonel Vindman a promotion. They offered him the job of being the 
commander in chief of their entire U.S. military, uh, U.S. military, the entire Ukrainian military. They offered him to be the top general mm. overseeing the entire Ukrainian so military. He, said no. he turned it down because he's well, got he's got another operation going on here. Yeah, probably, obviously, that something, tells you everything you need. to Something know. about that guy's fishy, but. But when you've got a guy on MSNBC is NBC News, when there's a so-called expert on NBC News telling you that the United States must defend till the end Ukraine, mm-hmm. and if you don't support that, you're a murderer, just as if you're over there killing people in Ukraine, I think it's relevant to tell viewers where they're coming from and what their biases are, and they don't do that. And I use Colonel Well, Vin- that's, why, that's why we're here. That's right. And that's right. why you have to do— your own research. You have to understand everybody that gives an opinion, including us, that's an opinion and they have their own perspective. Every, it's subjective. Okay. And, and people can't help but interject their own views and feelings into their opinions. That's why you have to understand when you hear people like him and talk, he's giving an opinion. He's giving his point of yeah. view. Um, and obviously when he is saying something like that, like you have blood on your hands, to me, that's like he's taking this very personally. You know what I mean? Like, well, it's because it's his country, yeah, and, and he's close enough to them that they were going to let him run their whole military. I mean, that's a pretty drastic thing to say. And, so. and you know, these other guys. Now, Vinman, I use Vinman because we all know Vinman. But these other yeah. retired uh, military people you see on all the television shows, most all of them, they're retired from the military, mm-hmm. but they work for companies or think tanks. That pay them very, very big salaries exactly. to go on television and promote agendas exactly. that help their company. It's it's one mm-hmm. big advertisement when yeah. you watch the news. People are on mm-hmm. there. You're right. They work for somebody. They're being paid to do something. And they're probably paying the network to let them have them on and get their surprised. message across. You know, the news is is really, you know, one big advertising yes. Uh, infomercial. That's right. That goes on and on and on. We watch the local news all the time and I didn't realize this growing up, but they'll do like, they'll do pieces on restaurants and local doctors mm-hmm. and things like mm-hmm. that. And then you realize they're paying for that sp- story. They yes. pay, it's a promotion, it's yeah. advertising. Yeah. yeah. So that goes on at all levels of the media. So there's That's right. always, it's, it's all about the, the Benjamins. Now listen, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, there's a lot more to talk about. I'm Brian. Always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be back right after this. From author Topaz Ruby comes the book, Reaching Beyond Ourselves, Leading a Spiritual, Peaceful, and Diverse World, available on Amazon. From Ukraine to Israel to Canada, writer Topaz Ruby explores through poetry and imagery what her languages and cultures mean to her. She describes her childhood in Ukraine, the joys and sorrows of growing up in Israel, and her decision to immigrate to Nova Scotia in 2009 and write in English. She shares her prayers for a spiritual, peaceful, and diverse world while referring to the teachings of her own Jewish traditions. The Baha'i Faith, other world religions, Albert Einstein, the Dalai Lama, and others. That's her immigration story, which is told in a colorful, award-winning book of poetry and art. Reaching beyond ourselves, leading a spiritual, peaceful, and diverse world from Topaz Ruby is available on Amazon in both Kindle and paperback. For more information about the author and her work of poetry and fiction, please visit her website AuthorJanetKravitz.com If you're looking to support Indigenous-owned companies, Red Eagle Promotions is a 100% First Nations-owned online gift shop based in Manitoba, Canada. Online at RedEaglePromotions.com And their Etsy shop, Red Eagle Promotions on Etsy.com All the products are designed by Indigenous Canadians that are highly dedicated in promoting Indigenous artists and their respective works. Their mission is to establish meaningful relationships with artists. Show your support by purchasing these products. They guarantee quality that you can trust. They have a wide selection of products, including tote bags, wallets, journals, blankets, towels, kitchen accessories, and much, much more. The designs are colorful, unique, and authentic. Subscribe to their email list to receive the latest sales, new releases, and more. Make sure to share this store on all of your social media so your friends can shop there too. What are you waiting for? Start shopping right now. RedEaglePromotions.com And on Etsy, search Red Eagle Promotions on Etsy.com. 
What do you get when you mix years of friendship, love, marriage, talks of divorce, lust, therapy, parenting, open communication, and a glass of something strong? You get the Wed Locked and Loaded podcast. Lee and Nicole and Daniel Laurent are the host of the Wed Locked and Loaded podcast. Join them each week as they discuss marriage, love, sex, finance, health, parenting, pop culture, and a whole lot more. Wed Locked and Loaded is available on Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Podbean, and your favorite podcast platform. If you're married, you will totally relate to Leah and Daniel. You may even learn a thing or two. Add the Wed Locked and Loaded podcast to your playlist right now. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Um, Over the weekend, you know, I... um, do live streams on YouTube over the weekend and just la- this I've been doing them two weeks now where I actually I take live calls on my weekend streams on my YouTube channel just search Brian Craig or Brian Craig show on the YouTube subscribe click the notification bell and over the weekend of course we were talking about the roundup in Canada and um, I was talking on the stream that I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people, including the leaders of the Freedom Convoy, arrested. I'm not seeing any mugshots. I'm not seeing any attorney. And I got calls from Canada, and people were very adamant with me. Yeah. Oh, they're releasing all these people. They're, they're all getting released. I said, including the leaders, I find that hard to believe. And they said, oh, yeah, it's all of it. Uh, Jack Prasobic, uh tweeted today. Um, one, one of the, the – um, I'm not sure what her name is. I saw her arrest last week, the, oh. the lady leader, one of the lady leaders they arrested last week. Jack Pro, uh, Prasobic tweeted today, Canada is now denying bail to the organizer of the Freedom Convoy and threatening her with 10 years in oh, yeah. prison. They're going to make an example um, out of these people. You know, they don't want this to ever happen again. You know, 10 years in prison for a peaceful protest that inconvenienced traffic? Um, they, this wasn't like, you know, um, BLM and Antifa in America where they were looting businesses and burning down cities, 10 years for organizing a peaceful, nonviolent protest with a mild traffic jam. Uh, and that's, that's what's going on. So those people involved in January 6th have gotten less time. That's true. Much less, like by half. Yeah. And, uh, by, by, uh, 10 years less, uh, they're getting, they get sent home. Yeah, yeah, you know, them, yeah. and and a lot of people over the weekend really got nasty with me uh, with nasty comments. And They're letting them go. Do your research. Well, here's the research. OK, exactly. uh, so I, I did it. Now, I want to play this clip. Um, this is uh, a lady member of parliament in Canada. She's obviously a lefty and um, said one of the most bizarre things I've ever heard about the Freedom Convoy. Listen to this. How many guns need to be seized? How much vitriol do we have to see of Hong Kong, which is an acronym for Hail Hitler, do we need to see by these protesters on social media? Okay. So, yeah, you heard it. Uh, Yeah, I'm going to repeat it. But she said when when the truckers go honk, honk, that that's code for Heil Hitler. Mm, kind of like the OK sign. Is I the guess. White supremacy. I mean, where the hell did that come That's from? Out of her ass. You know, this woman, I think she believes that. Um, she obviously. It's insane. Yeah, she obviously uh, didn't grow up driving around in cars as a kid. You know, when, when I was a little kid and we'd see truck drivers, we were doing that thing with our fingers to always in hand to try to get them to honk their horn. Well, Brian, this is what the that left does. That does not mean does. Heil Hitler. No, this is what the left does. <laughs> Heil Hitler. They villainize. People that they see as their opponents, people that they see as a threat, which are not a threat, but th- this is the new tactic now, or maybe not new, but it's been amplified. They've always used this tactic, but now it's much worse. They immediately label them uh, Nazis, bigots, yeah. uh, racist, terrorists. They throw all the labels out there, and Trudeau did this with these truckers immediately. This this was not this is not a new thing. He labeled them violent. He labeled them terrorists. He labeled them dangerous. Yeah. 
And they do that so they can lay down the hammer on these people and it's justified yes. in the eyes of the public. Well, mm-hmm. they're dangerous, so I have to freeze their bank accounts and That's take all right. their money. Mm-hmm. And I have to take the $10 million they raised on GoFundMe because they're terrorists. That's right. I mean, this is they, they need to justify their behavior, so they do it by villainizing. And it's also a way of control, and it's a way of shaming these people publicly so they don't do this again. Uh, and they're going to make an example in Canada out of all these people. You think January 6th is bad with the people they're making? Well, they, this will be much, much worse. They've, in both countries, in the United States and Canada, the left have labeled their political opponents yep. um, domestic terrorists and Nazis. And for someone to say honk honk is code for Heil Hitler, that's, that's insane. That's and it, when you see that – I'm sure some of you guys have seen her – video on online she she believes it um one last oh, thing yeah. before we move on there's she a sounded very upset to, to this next topic uh kathy and i both now um after after we did the podcast yesterday we, i was finally able to get my profile set up on on mm-hmm. president trump's truth social and like millions of other people kathy and i are still on the waiting list we are. you're after me so i'll i'll get on there before you so hopefully Today, Sean Farage is on there. He mm. announced on Twitter, the guy who does the best Trump Did he just get on? Yep, he just tweeted mm. it a few minutes ago. He just got on, and you know he signed up right away. So his account mm. is there. He has the same, he said he has the same name that he does on Twitter. Um, I'll tell you guys got, my name after be- it's finalized. Yeah, I'm going to wait till it's best, finalized. Yeah, Trump in person. Well, you know, this, this thing with uh, the truth social waiting list, the waiting list obviously exists so that they can slowly... Uh, Add yeah. people to the platform so it doesn't crash. I, that's what I. That's what I uh, yeah. thought immediately. Yeah, that it's a it's a controlled sign up. They're doing it in groups. And yeah, and President Trump, because everything President Trump does is 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 perfect because he's so good at everything he does. He has he has started a new social media platform that is open with complete perfection. There have been no mm-hmm. crashes. He's doing this. The waiting list is uh, obviously. I want to be on it yesterday. I mean, it's you know the, the suspense is killing me. I know. But um, one day you'll just wake up and boom, you'll open the app and you'll be there. Well, I keep checking every six seconds, and it still <laughs> it still says I did move up the ranks because in the beginning I was two hundred and fifty thousand yeah. something thousand. Now I'm a hundred and fifty something thousand. Oh, that's good. So, uh, but I, I haven't be getting on there soon. I was like ninety two thousand yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I understand what he's doing, and it's complete perfection. And don't worry, soon enough we'll all be on it. And I, and I keep hearing from people on Android that are so upset. Yeah. Uh, if Donald Trump would have allowed everybody and every system on everywhere in the world at the same time, it would have crashed and the media would be do, yeah. doing celebration it's dances on rollout. CNN. Right, because he, he knows it's going to be huge. And it's it was the number one app. It's the number one app in the Apple Store right The number now. one most downloaded app. Yeah, Isn't I'm that, sure liberals love that. It's, you know, and, and, I, and I'm going to stand by what I said yesterday. I do believe that Donald Trump's truth social will take the crown away from Twitter Pro- by, and I, I think it's going to be sooner than you think. Um, That'd be amazing. It's going to be by the presidential election. It's going to take a short time. And I, I actually was reading the history of the Twitter startup this morning because I wanted, I was curious, you know, because we were talking, you know, they, they, they keep comparing anytime there's a new social media outlet that conservatives bring out, and they're really doing this with Trump, they compare mm-hmm. it with Twitter and Facebook. When Twitter and Facebook came out, there were not millions of people wanting to sign up for them. And Twitter actually was part of a – was an internal uh, platform for people that were podcasting on a defunct podcast platform that doesn't exist any longer. Mm. And it slowly was turned into Twitter. And Well, Facebook you know, kind of started yeah. that way too. It was a thing at Harvard yeah. that they created for the students mm. to get to know each other. Mm. Yeah, and then it, and then they got it with investors, and then it went like to a global yeah. thing. So you know, Truth Social from day one is where Facebook and Twitter were, like at year ten or so. You understand yeah, what I exactly. mean? Exactly. So it's and and for it to open up without crashing, I just think is phenomenal. Well, we have an update on Kyle Rittenhouse. This is Whoopi Goldberg is trending on Twitter. Oh so my of course gosh. we had to look at She's that. She's trend- trending, really? Um, Kyle Rittenhouse, he was on Tucker last night and he is suing, he's looking at suing Whoopi Goldberg along with politicians, news organizations, other celebs for calling him a murderer and a white supremacist. Kyle Rittenhouse says he's looking at filing lawsuits against Whoopi Goldberg and the Young Turks 
Tank Aguirre. Ike or whatever. Yeah, he was on CPAC uh, on with, uh, C-SPAN when I was on there. Along remember? with politicians, news organizations, athletes, and other celebrities for the lies they said about him after he fatally shot two men and seriously wounded a third. You know, he he was a minor when this happened, not when the trial was, yeah. but when it happened. These people need to be careful what they say about about minors. Now I know he was he he wasn't a minor during the trial, but he was a minor when they were maligning his name. Um, they didn't learn their lesson from uh, from Nick Sandman. Rittenhouse made his declaration during Tucker's uh, show Monday night. Me and my team have decided to launch the Media Accountability Project as a tool to help fundraise and hold the media accountable for the lies they say and deal with them in court. Well, good for him. Carlson, no- hold on. Carlson noticed that Rittenhouse's plan echoes legal action taken against new or- news organizations that defame Nick Sandman. <laughs> Blah, blah, blah. So good for them. Well, I have the clip of uh, Kyle actually going through the list of people he's going to sue. So let me play. This is Kyle Rittenhouse on Tucker last night and his list of who he's going to sue. Politicians, celebrities, athletes. Whoopi Goldberg's on the list. She called me a murderer after I was acquitted by a jury of my peers. Good for him. She went on to still say that. And there's others. Don't forget about Sank from the Young Turks. He called me a murderer before verdict and continues to call me a murderer. Okay. Um, yeah. Good for him. And, you know, this— Look what happened with Richard Jewell. You know, they just—look what they put him through. Same thing. Well, yeah, but R- Richard—okay. Richard Jewell and Nick Sandman are a little different because— You mean Kyle Rittenhouse. Uh, no, 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 no. Nick Sandman and, and uh, uh, Richard Jewell are different than Rittenhouse in that— Neither of them, well, right, uh, yeah. even it, were were not involved in a in a legal really proceeding. Richard Jewell was never on trial. That's true. And Nick Salmon certainly did nothing. Uh, Rittenhouse on trial, so they're going to use that as a defense. But here's the thing: that their news, there's a difference between news and opinion. And obviously, you know, high profile court cases have always been covered in the news. But the news used to report them even during the days of OJ. They would report them as hard news, and they would have legal experts on to give analysis. Now they just have liberals on who tell you, well, you know, what, what, did, what did they call him on MSNBC, Tiffany Cross? This little white supremacist, white you know, this little white murderer. supremacist. And, you know, and what, they, what the media did was imply throughout the trial and um, uh, after that he shot – uh, innocent, unarmed African Americans. Everyone that lie. he shot was right. white, and had attacked him, and it was self-defense. And they were all like in Antifa. Yeah, a lot of these people. Exactly. They, they were they were people that were terrorizing this town, burning buildings. He was asked to be there to defend this car dealership because they were destroying property. Um, well, it'll be interesting to see because now you have a precedent with Nick Salmon. I wish we could know the details of the that case, but. What happens is they get a payment. And well, Nick they, Salmon's rich for life. That's yeah, what we but know. but they sign a – what they settle and or whatever, and then they sign a thing saying they'll never talk about it again as part of yeah. the agreement is usually what happens. But there's precedent now, and I would like to see more and more people – but you're right. It's different than Richard Jewell and Nick Salmon because – but but Nick Salmon was not called a murderer, um, and he wasn't called such horrible things. He was called, I think, yeah. probably a racist and whatever – but they throw these words around, and you know words do matter. And uh, the Bible talks extensively on the power of the tongue and how the tongue is the biggest weapon in the human body, and that's how important words are in in the Bible. They're very important, and people have to be held accountable for their words. And I don't care. Um, I know he's known because of what happened, but he's a normal citizen. He's an everyday person. Um, he's not a celebrity. I wonder what the accountability is. Um, with somebody at his level that's not like a celebrity, like a Whoopi Goldberg. Or, like, how could you, why can you call Alec Baldwin a murderer and not get sued, but not him? You can't really. I mean, d- they both shot people. You can't slander a public figure. And, and at some point, but here, right. here's the thing. So he, even though he's was in the public eye, he's not considered well, the same level I don't know. as Alec maybe, Baldwin, right? Maybe now he is. But, you know, the thing with the. Because people call out Baldwin that all the time. Well, this is the deal with the media. The, the media today, which is just all opinion, you know, they're not news people. Um, they're they're forcing on this country be, through their hate, um, hanging judges and juries, and they're and they're influencing the justice system. Like Kim Potter, 
you know, Kim Potter and the Dante Wright killing is, was only arrested and tried and going to prison because of, uh, you know, of, um, mm-hmm. of, uh, uh, of the Floyd incident. So there was a mob push by the media, Joy Reid and others, and that's why and, – and a similar thing with, with Kyle Rittenhouse. The media have no standards and practices anymore. I do – you know, what I do and everything I do on every platform I'm on is I have standards and practices that I apply to myself with everything I do on every platform I'm on. Sometimes people give me a hard time about that. But that's how, you know, I, when I first started in broadcasting in, in the early 1990s, 91, 92, you know, you, you, there, were, there were standards. Now there's no standards, and, and people are just saying things that are, that yeah, are slanderous think, all over I the think place. the media always did that. If no, you, not like this. No, but because they didn't have the platforms they had then. But if you go back 100 years when things happened, there were people that were villainized in the press. Yeah, but most people couldn't read do back anything. then. Like I they understand can now. that, but the media, but the practice of doing that is still happened. They just didn't have the, the outlets they had that now. And they didn't, you're right. People weren't as literate, but they still use this media still use their platform to malign people. Uh, look at the, the Emmett Till. Um, didn't, wasn't yeah. he treated well, that way? It the used guy to be, was innocent. I mean, this is what it, they do. It used to be, Newspapers before there was television or newspapers. Newspapers used to let you know if they were a Democrat or a Republican paper. Sometimes it was in the name of the paper, like here in Florida in Tallahassee, the main paper is called the Tallahassee Democrat, and and papers used to openly be okay. We're a Republican paper. We're a Democrat paper. Now they do it under the guise of being news and yeah. and and have this this impartial thing, which is just a. A lie, but and the media always maligns people not, well, publicly. It, but, They've always done that. But, they pick a side and they go. But with not it. like this, because television has access to millions of people in real time. Back in those days, yeah. information didn't move as fast. Um, Kyle Rittenhouse was pretty much arrested, charged, and put on trial before he even got home that night. It was on television, and he was already convicted in the court of the mainstream media. Uh, bef- uh, before anything had happened. So back then there was a delay. You News tra- travel. I wonder if people sued the, the newspapers, though, if you were innocent. If, Maybe. Because they would drag your name through the mud mm-hmm. like they do now if you were a normal person. If the media decided you were guilty and then it came out, oh, he didn't do anything wrong. Were people, were they sued back then for that? But sometimes. It'll be interesting to see the sometimes. difference between Kyle and Nick but, because Kyle actually did kill some two people, right? Two, it was two. And Salmon didn't what hurt anybody, gonna, so it'll be interesting to see the outcome. What of they're going to argue is, even though someone's acquitted, they've right. still committed murder. Did killing someone, that's what that's even what I mean. in a justifiable situation, is still murder. Is what exactly. they're going to say. It's a little different than Nick right. Sandman. Um, so I don't know if he has any case with Whoopi, mm. but maybe because he did kill two people, but maybe the white supremacy thing. Um, like I said, people call Alec Baldwin a murderer. That's yeah, that's true. He did yeah. kill somebody. Um, it's a harsh word, but he did kill two people, but he was acquitted, but he still, it happened. Then, but the white supremacy thing and the, you know, it'll be interesting to see. How and he was a case, minor. Right. Pans out as, it was a minor. as, a, as compared to Sam. Now uh, I want to take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters for their support of the program. Thank you so much as we have entered the 10th year of this program, um, which is absolutely amazing. And our Patreon supporters, you are very much in large part responsible for the longevity of this program that is still going strong. And uh, if you would like to become a Patreon supporter and support the program that way, there's a link in the episode description and in the description of every episode, as well as a direct link on my website, briancraigshow.com. The direct website address is patreon.com slash real Brian Craig show. And there are perks and benefits to becoming a Patreon supporter, including getting commercial-free editions of each and every podcast episode. And our top Patreon supporters get a live on-air thank you on each and every episode. So the names you are about to hear are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, Gary, ETW, Chuck, Pamela, D, Jacqueline, Rick, Nick, and Rich. These are our top Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for your support. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We're going to take a quick break and be right back. There's a lot more to talk about. Don't go anywhere. 
the search for the most dangerous book in the world is about to begin. From authors Wayne E. Haley and Sean P. Haley comes An Apology to Lucifer. Now available for sale at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Apple Books, and on the book's official website, anapologytolucifer.com. In An Apology to Lucifer, Father Thomas Morelli thought he knew the story behind Lucifer's fall from heaven. However, upon making the acquaintance of renowned book authenticator Lorenzo Pellegrini and being invited to stay in the opulent Venice Villa belonging to Pellegrini's master. Thomas discovers he has only heard part of the story. In Boston, psychoanalyst, best-selling author, and outspoken atheist David Wright has been tasked to handle the funeral arrangements of his dear friend Albert Kennedy. What could have driven this controversial exorcist to take his own life? The answer, it seems, is contained in a book that isn't supposed to exist. Joining forces, Lorenza, David, and Thomas must race against time to prevent an ancient battle from reigniting. If you enjoyed The Da Vinci Code, you will love this book, An Apology to Lucifer, the most anticipated supernatural thriller of 2022, is now available at barnesandnoble.com, Amazon, Apple Books, and on the book's official website, An Apology to Lucifer.com. Order your copy right now. From author Davinder Kaur comes your next must-read book, Forced to Marry Him, A Lifetime of Tradition and the Will to Break It, available on Amazon. In the late 1980s, Davinder Kaur was forced to marry a man she didn't know. But when she was only 14 years old, the marriage was arranged and said to occur when she turned 18. After four long years of internal turmoil and despair, she had two choices, adhere to the customs and traditions of her family or risk bringing dishonor to their home. Devinder didn't like either option, so she made a plan, a plan to survive. In the book, Forced to Marry Him, the author tells of the pain, lies, and betrayal she suffered at the hands of those who were meant to protect her most. But her story doesn't end there. Devinder's willingness to speak out and fight not only saved her life, but the lives of many other women and young girls over the years. She offers courage and strength to those who can't advocate for themselves. And she works with organizations all over the world to help end arranged and forced marriages. The author gives a voice to the voiceless as she breaks down walls to eradicate cultural and traditional abuse. This book is perfect for book clubs. Forced to Marry Him, A Lifetime of Tradition and the Will to Break It. From author Davinder Kaur. Available in Kindle and paperback on Amazon. You can also find the author on Twitter and Instagram at L-U-C-H-A-N-I-K or visit her website L-U-C-H-A-N-I-K L-U-C-H-A-N-I-K dot com. Good morning. You're on the radio. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good morning. This is Chaplain Jethro from Flint, Michigan. Hey, Chaplain Jethro in Michigan. What's up, Chaplain? Well, first of all, I want to uh, thank Mike Lindell for the great product called My Slippers. That cured my neuropathy in a big way. In 10 minutes after I put them on, it went away. This morning, I, I woke up with uh, leg cramps, put them on, leg cramps gone. That's amazing. I tell you, it's a great product. Which one do you have? I have the tan fur line mock and my slippers. Which ones do you have, Chaplain? I have the uh, blue ones and they're fur lined also. I've heard from several listeners that the Mike Lindell My Slippers make their neuropathy go away and there's very little treatment for neuropathy and people that suffer from it, it's torture. So I appreciate that. All right, Thank Jethro, you. I appreciate the call and thanks for the kind words about Mike Lindell's My Slippers and how they help with your neuropathy. Yes, indeed, they do. <laughs> and right now, when you use the promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E, save 50% percent off the my pillow my slippers go to mypillow.com click on the radio listener specials and use our promo code kane k-a-n-e for 50 percent off the my pillow my slippers that's 50 percent off but you've got to use the promo code kane k-a-n-e you are listening to the brian craig show podcast Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Okay, now, um, I saw this came out today, this thing with Rick Scott, who used to be our governor before mm. Ron DeSantis. He was a very good governor. Not as good. Sorry, Rick Scott. Not as good as Ron DeSantis. Today but is very good. Florida became part of the United States in 1819. 
Today, oh, really? February 2nd, 22nd. Well, you know, Florida has been— John Quincy Adams. Uh, Florida has been part of more countries than any other state. Florida was part of France, part of Spain, part, once England. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. The United States, the Confederacy, the Confederate States, and then again, the United States again. So I didn't know. It was, I thought it was just part of Spain. Spain, France, England, all at different points, yeah. And the Native Americans. I took a class in college, the history of Florida. So oh, that's, you know, I learned all this yes. stuff. I learned all this stuff about Florida. It was a whole class I took in college on the history of Florida. Um, Rick Scott, though, uh, he is, um, he's our senator now, and he's a Senate, um, mm. he's, in, he's in charge of the um, Senate congressional race campaign thing. And he, and he came out with an 11-point plan, and I wasn't going to talk about it, but then I saw on Twitter, Huffington Post was having a meltdown over it. So I said, well, let me go look at what this plan is. And uh, so we'll do that. And Rick Scott, I just say a couple things about Rick Scott, because no one is as great of a governor as Governor Ron DeSantis. But when, when he was governor of Florida, he was just brilliant. You know, in Florida, we occasionally get hurricanes, not as much as you think. OK, Florida is Everyone thinks we get hurricanes here all the time. No, we really don't. Most of the hurricanes miss Florida. Um, Which is shocking because yeah. the Florida, the peninsula sticks out. But the way the winds go, usually they go under the state up yeah. to, into the Gulf or they go up along the side up into the Carolinas. Yeah. Just because of the way the winds are where yeah. we live. But we do get hurricanes. Yeah. And um, we, do. we are very well prepared for them. In fact, the last time we had a major hurricane a couple years ago, this was back when Periscope was around. I was on Periscope. I showed people on Periscope. And if we have another one, I hope we don't, I'll show on YouTube what we do for hurricane prep. Kathy we lost and I, our two trees. Yeah, we have uh, hurricane glass on our windows, which yeah. means they, they're like shatterproof. Yeah. But um, those windows are expensive to replace. So we also have hurricane shutters that we put over the hurricane That's glass. Right. We have a generator in case we lose electricity. And there are problems with, um, in the past, prior to Rick Scott, the biggest problem with a hurricane is not the hurricane um, itself. It's after the hurricane. But a hur when you're in the house, we do have, on our back door, we have um, uh, French doors that are hurricane doors with hurricane glass on, and we don't cover those up. So we can see outside during the hurricane. Right. But the rest of the house has hurricane shutters on all the windows. And what a hurricane mm. sounds like, mm. it sounds like a freight train is right outside your window for hours and hours and hours. tornadoes sound like that too. Yeah, but tornadoes don't last as long. And it goes on and on and you on. You get pummeled and pummeled with rain and wind. For You're right, tornadoes move because a hurricane might travel eight Nine miles yeah. an hour, so, and it's big. It stretches 500 miles, so yeah. it just sits there pummeling your house. Yeah, and the last hurricane, um, we, were, we, we had a pretty scary thing. We had um, something that was a problem the whole time we had this house. We, when we bought our house, mm -hmm. which was 17 years ago, we had these two trees in the backyard. That what, what type of trees were those? Ficus uh, trees. Ficus trees. They're all over Florida. Which but they're are, not indigenous to Florida. Well, that's the problem. That's the problem. Um, trees that are indigenous survive hurricanes. Trees usually. that are not fall. Yeah, usually and yes. these trees had grown to be about 50 feet high, each of them. And we had two of them in our backyard. And one of them was really close to our back door and kitchen. And the hurricane winds were so strong, they both were – ripped out of the ground and fell to the ground. Uh, they both missed our house, but the w but one of them, for about an hour, hour and a half, we were watching it through the window. The hurricane window, the back door, was lifting up and down. It almost looked like it was the ground was breathing, and then eventually it went and landed on our neighbor's house, thankfully, not ours. Well, our, fa our neighbor's uh, pool screen enclosure. It didn't land on their house. It landed on their swimming pool. And then the other one fell and landed on our other neighbor's swimming pool. And they both missed our house. If either of those trees would have hit our house, it would have destroyed our house in the hurricane well, and we would have been in trouble. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I remember I had called my dad when it was happening. And my dad's lived here since the 60s. And uh, he told me, as I said, I'm concerned about these two trees. This was like the day before. He said, he said they're going to fall counterclockwise. They fall to the west. Always. And right. I said, well, how do you know? He said, because that's the way hurricanes go. The, the, winds, the winds travel counterclockwise always. And he said, your trees are going to fall 
to your neighbor next to you, not on you, because of the way your house is. Yeah. And he was right. They fell. They fell west. They fall west. They, they fall, fall west. So you learn something. So what Rick Scott did, though, when a hurricane, the reason we're telling you about this is just to explain the brilliance of Rick Scott. Then we'll get to his plan that Huff, Huff Post's having a meltdown over. The biggest problem when we have hurricanes in Florida is not the hurricane itself because our houses mostly are prepared for them. But the big yeah. problem is trees fall and knock down the power lines. Right. And Rick Scott was the first governor ever in the history of Florida. And Florida has been a state since when, 1819, you said, right? Yeah, 1819. He was the first governor Today. who said, you know what? Why do we have trees around the power lines? Because what happens is the power— I mean, that's a no-brainer to The me. trees fall <laughs> and rip the power lines exactly. down, and you don't have electricity. And there's a lot of trees down so, here, yeah, a lot. So Rick Scott went, uh, went on a statewide plan of, ch- of trimming and cutting down the trees on our power lines— in the last hurricane, he also replaced the poles, the the power line yeah, poles so, from wood to yeah. to uh, steel. So the last hurricane, because of Rick Scott's yeah. brilliance, did not. We didn't lose power, and Rick Scott. This was crazy. We didn't have internet for about two weeks, and I was getting pretty frustrated. And I did. So, PJ Gladnick from Newsbusters laughs at me about this all the time. I was getting pretty fed up with not having the internet. Yeah, he you was, know, he was going nuts. Well, I needed the internet for work. I mean, literally. Just pacing and so, couldn't handle I it. Could, yeah, so I um, I called Governor Rick Freaking Scott's out. office. I called, I spoke to the governor of Florida's secretary. I got the secretary on the phone. And Brian is not like this. He no. Doesn't, he the, doesn't call and bug people. <laughs> this is a, and, that's not usual for you. And, and, I, and I know Rick Scott comes from the world of private business, and, and, I, um, and I told Governor Scott's secretary – uh, I said we've not had internet. It's been ten days, and um, and and but and I and I didn't say well. I need my internet at home. We so had I could, power. We just had no. We had no internet. We were using hotspots on our phone. So, yeah. uh, but it takes a long time to upload yeah. the podcast on a hotspot. So I said, you know, I said um, the local businesses in the area are only taking cash. They can't take credit cards or debit cards because without internet, they can't process the payments. And I was very detailed about that. And the same day. Uh, the um, the uh, uh, internet company came in our neighborhood, and by the next morning, we had internet because of Rick Scott and my phone. Now, I didn't call and say, my name is Brian Craig, and I'm a well-known member of the media. I just called up like a guy. Right. You know, I didn't, I don't want you to think I was using the power of uh You know, these, these, <laughs> the poli- right, they, these politicians are not used to people calling. Nobody you, really calls, so you, you, you would you do, be, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. I, I've told you guys before, I got the roads paved That's in our uh, development. I got a uh, state senator's uh, office on the line. And you, you and but anyway, you can get things done. So anyway, let's get back to what he did, though. Rick, this is in the Huffington Post. Rick Scott, who's the most competent governor ever, other than Ron DeSantis, the well, second yeah. he's Rick second the second most competent governor right. ever, Rick Scott, who's now a senator from Florida. Rick Scott releases far right plan for GOP Senate majority. Far right plan. So they're panicked at seeing a far right plan. So. I wasn't even going to read about this because I wasn't really interested in the 11-point plan until I saw that the Huffington Post was having a meltdown. So I went and pulled it up. It's called the Rescue America Plan, and there's 11 points. And let me go through them. And this is what they call a right-wing plan, right? Okay. First, number one, this is Rick Scott's plan that he released today. Our kids will say the Pledge of Allegiance, salute the flag, learn that America is a great country, Mm. and choose the school that bet best fits them school Ugh, choice how awful saying the pledge saluting the flag learning that america is the great con- greatest country in the world that's that's right wing radicalism according Isn't to the post sad that a politician has to pass uh, make a plan to get kids to do that get yeah. schools to do this we just had to do here's the second one colorblind equality this is a good one the government will never ask an american citizen to disclose their race ethnicity or skin color on any government form ever again yeah good they this, should okay yeah Number three, sa- safety and crime. The soft on crime days of coddling criminal behavior will end. We will refund and respect the police because they, not the criminals, are the good guys. Exactly. Where's the radicalism here? This sounds like common sense stuff. I mean, this shows you where liberals are. That they think this is right wing radical thinking. Yeah. This is common sense. Yeah. Thinking, but they have no common sense. That's true. So yeah. There you go. Here's the they next one. They have no sense. We will secure our border. Finish building the wall. And name it after President Donald Trump. Oh, right. oh, I love the that. Great Wall of Trump. I just had a thought. What if What if he picks Rick Scott as his VP? Oh, that'd be good. 
Yeah, I've never heard that name. I'd, that'd be around. good. It could, yeah. be, it could be. He's been a governor, a senator. Here's some more of that right wing radicalism. <laughs> we will grow America's economy, starve Washington's economy, and stop socialism. Oh, God forbid. Yeah. We will eliminate all federal programs that can be done locally and enact term limits for federal, federal bureaucrats and Congress. I um, think any of this is going to happen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is uh, – Newt Gingrich has worked on Rick Scott with this. This is a 2022 edition of the 1994 Contract for America. Um, oh, we good. will protect, defend, and promote the American family at all cost. Um, men, here's another one. Men are men. Women are women. It's oh, like, boy. This is like Archie Bunker. <laughs> when men were men, you know. Men are men and women are women. Ugh. And unborn babies are babies. That's we right. believe in science. Exactly. That is science. <laughs> I, like, I mean, that's so ridiculous. This is what Huffington Post has flipped out about. And I love how this, you know, one thing I like about, I like everything on this, by the way, but I like what Rick Scott's very smart, isn't he? Notice how he takes liberal words and phrases yep. and he, we believe in science. Yeah, you know? I mean, that is scientific. <laughs> Americans will be free to welcome God into all aspects of our lives. Wonderful. Which, by the way, does not necessarily mean Christianity. It can mean Islam or any other exactly. religion. We are Americans, not globalists. Exactly. That's the final one of Rick yeah. Scott. And there's, you can go there. It's uh, rescueamerica.com, and it gives into the details. So he's putting this through in the Senate. This is, this is what he's saying is the Republican, uh, uh, the Republican Senate, right, that's, you know, that's running for re-election. Because remember, a third of the Senate is up every right. two years. That uh, this is what we stand for. Oh, good. Uh, elect Republicans is to the Senate. Is he running for re-election yet? I don't think, no, I don't believe he's up this DeSantis time. DeSantis is mm, for governor. But, yes, but. Um, Fantastic. I, I like think that this platform. Is, yeah, well, there's nothing radical there. That's just, like you said, Kathy, common sense. Well, liberals have no common sense. They have no sense. Now, I'm not going to get into this before we go, but I just saw on Twitter what's trending. John Bolton. Viewers react to Trump National Security Advisor John Bolton's Tuesday appearance on MSNBC. I, I haven't watched it, but I, you know what John Bolton loves more than anything? Himself. Go, well, <laughs> number two, going to war. So yeah. I'm sure John Bolton is uh, ready just to move in to uh, uh, Russia. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I see people on Twitter, liberals, blaming Trump for this war, that he sent them secrets. It's more made-up fantasy that he sent them secrets and he mm. set this whole thing up. Yeah, okay, Trump set this whole thing up. To happen under Biden. I mean, this is absurd. It makes no sense. I wanted to ask a question um, to the audience here because I'm seeing people on Twitter uh, talking about gas prices. In fact, my mom just texted me to load up my car now. Well, I don't know if that's going to make a difference. I want to ask you guys, um, leave a comment. What is gas where you live now? And what do you think it will be by the end of the summer? Oh. What do you think it'll be by Labor Day? Where you yeah. live, so like here it's like three seventy five a gallon. Meanwhile, under Trump, it was like a dollar fifty um, or a dollar seventy five. It's gone up like a buck fifty. So it was like maybe what a dollar? It was a mm. dollar something, and now yeah. it's like three, maybe three mm. fifty. Anyway, tell us what it is now where you live, and what do you think it will be by Labor Day because of this Russia nonsense? Well, let us know in the comments. We are all out of time. But we'll be back next time. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll talk to you next time. There's a podcast that you will want to add to your playlist. Warriors for Christ. That's the number four. Warriors for Christ is a Christian podcast providing biblical teaching without the doctrines of man. In other words, they like to let the Bible explain itself. The format includes non-denominational readings and teachings from the Bible. They also have interviews and whatever the Lord puts on their hearts to present. Life in this world can be very stressful and filled with anxieties. Warriors for Christ will give you the biblical information you need to help deal with all life has to bring. Warriors for Christ confronts many false doctrines which are pervasive in this age and what some call the church in a box. And they also offer a full gospel ministry. Find Warriors for Christ on Podomatic, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Player FM, Stitcher, Deezer, Amazon Podcast, and Spotify. Warriors for Christ. Share the podcast on all of your social media so your friends can listen to Warriors for Christ. That's the number four. Add it to your playlist right now.